3.45 a.m. in the morning, Replit decide to exit the education market. No warning, no heads up, nothing, done it mid-year. They are the very teacher who walks out on the kids and decides never to come back. Unfortunately, it looks like 41 million students who use Chromebooks are going to be left with very few other options. If you've got MacBooks, you've got Windows or you've got Linux machines, then the options are looking a little bit more rosy and I'm putting together a first aid kit for you right here, right now. And we have got a document to help everyone. There are going to be compromises. There are going to be things we have to say, we can't do that anymore, you know. And of course, as teachers, we're going to do our best for the kids. If that means we have to cancel our holidays, if that means we have to do what we need to do, we will get it done. But it is so, so disappointing that another tech company puts profits way, way, way ahead of education. So the first thing we're absolutely going to have to do is back up all our resources. And I don't know about you, I don't know how much you've got in there, but as a teacher, I've got a lot of lessons in there. It took me about two hours last night to individually back them up. And there are some almighty clangers in terms of this. I thought, oh, I can just download the zip file. It might be slow. Anything with a dot is not going to come with your zip file. So even though you can see it, it will not be saved to your zip file. So rename your dot lesson. Um as lesson and if you have any other dot files like dot tutorial you also need to rename that i already noticed that replit is getting a lot slower um i was on a good connection it was after school time so the students weren't using it and it was very very slow and i would have said it was about the time the uk would be coming onto that once you've done that it will make zip file for you save it back it up and you should be okay so your files are downloaded at least you've got them safe what are you going to do with them well there are a few choices um one choice that we're quite seriously considering for some of the lower year groups is literally uh, to use google docs and make workbooks and use the code function the code function works with enterprise and education accounts it's good because it copies and pastes you don't have any of the problems that you used to have with microsoft word where it would uh, not put the files in properly or not put the code in properly so that's one option uh, if you're not using docs then over on the microsoft side i would say github is excellent <laughs> it has all the power you could possibly need for copying and pasting code and saving code and probably for most teachers most purposes where they're giving just little snippets then a gist being the very word it is perfect. You can embed this and uh, you can embed this into most websites. You can embed it into um, all sorts of things and all sorts of places. Um, anywhere you can put an embed code, uh, you can download it. You can uh, use it with various things. So share, um, connect via HTTPS and SSH. So you've got the full power of GitHub behind you and it just makes it really, really simple um, for you to use with students so if you've got a github account i would recommend that highly as a good way and you can see i got tons and tons and tons of these things the other um, alternative that's really good and i've used it for years and years is pastebin um pastebin is is a one tool does exactly what it says on the thing it allows you to paste things put things uh, put any code it highlights the code it allows you to download the code it allows you to have it in raw text it, it's exactly what it says it is um, one of my favorite tools for a very very long time i have used it for years and years it allows you to embed it into other websites they can expire all sorts of things can happen and just a great place to put code snippets so that's one place to put your snippets uh, that's really handy and useful so so far what we've done is we've managed to back up all our lessons we've managed to put them and we've enabled ourselves to put code snippets places where students can easily get at them and use them in an ide of their choice um, there are many great ideas out there but ironically, I'm going back to the very one I started with in the very first place for Python and have used pretty much all along for my own projects, and that's PyCharm. PyCharm haven't been idly sitting by and doing nothing while Replit has been um, taking the education market and 
taking all the goodies. No, they've actually been quietly developing their own plugin and uh, allowing you not only to have things but to have courses as well. So very, very powerful. And in this particular video, I'm really focusing on my lessons, my code, how can I get it to be as close to Replit as possible. So what you're seeing right now is the code, but there are some really fun options available there for you in terms of ready-made courses. They're a little bit too tricky for a lot of my students who are EAL. So really, I want my own courses back in action. When you're in PyCharm, it doesn't matter whether it's the community edition or it is the um, professional edition. I'm using the pro edition. Again, another kindness from uh PyCharm teachers get a free copy of the Pro Edition, which, which is absolutely fantastic. But it doesn't make any difference for this. And I think for students, actually, in some ways, the Community Edition is easier because there's a few less menus and things like that. So I think that's really handy. So when you open it up, you get the welcome screen, click on Learn to actually use the course functions. If you're not using Python, by the way, uh, these tools are common across a range of the JetBrains tools. So there's a version for Java and some of the other tools too. So don't feel this is only a Python solution. You can do this just as easily in Java too. So here we go, we're ready to go. We're gonna create our own course. And although I'm saying I'm creating our own course, yes, we are creating a course, but really I'm looking to get all my Replit stuff off Replit and onto something else. And of course, the real power here, or at least right now I'm feeling, is that at least these files are now back on my hard drive safely where I've got ownership of the data and I can back them up as I feel like it to where I feel like it. JetBrains does allow you to upload it to their own um, tools and portfolios and stuff, so that might be something we would want to do but here we go we're starting off here and you can see that there is a blank course for you one of the nice things is that you can uh, create the course on preview so you can have a little play with that and it starts you off with a, a lesson and a task um, I've called them units because generally um, none of these are like one lesson but you know, you can call it lesson, you can call it units, and you can put various tasks in there. The main ones that I'll be using are output and multiple choice. That is because that's what I developed. I believe the testing functionalities are very powerful and probably go some way beyond what was available in Replit. But for now, I'm looking for a plug-in replacement. I don't know how familiar you are with PyCharm, and it is one of the popular packages in general and so this part is a little bit different so when you make a new task and I'm going to make one now so I make a new task and I'm going to call it task one yeah that's fine because I've done that and what I'm going to do is pick the output so I press task one I press enter and it pops it in to the correct place here so we can see that and what it will provide you is it will provide you with the markdown which powerfully um, for PyCharm doesn't have to be marked down, it can be HTML just as easy, which is a big, big step up and something I think I would like to take real advantage of uh, in the future. But all of the stuff came in markdown, so that's what I'll be using. The input text, so that's the inputs that you will put in, your output texts and your main.py. Um, these are the standard things that come and they're available. Notice when you click here, you've got a check and it checks. Oh, it's incorrect because we haven't put any output in. But let's say we put works there and then we go to our main and we just print works. And let's have another little test. One of the things I do like about this over uh, Replay is it's much more obvious which is working and there we are congratulations and so for input output those are all the key things let's have a, a little bit more of a look at the details and this is something I've done and made correctly so this is what was in Replit. So let's have a look. Exactly the same as the Replit. You can see that. One of the things that might be a little bit annoying 
is this button here. So you can press here, have a list like this, but you probably don't want two copies and you can click like that and get rid of the extra so you don't have three copies going around with your mark down there as well. Also, please have a look over here. You can switch this on or off depending what you want to do. So these are nice things and what you will find is you've got your main pie. Now I had quite a lot of images. I put them in an assets folder, but actually that's not so useful. I like have one or two images per thing, so that's there. So you can just literally put your JPEGs, your PNGs, and all of this is pretty much exactly the same because it's standard markdown. This bit here was some HTML I quite cleverly um, put in um, but that's not really needed because they actually have a lovely hint tool which they talk to you about and I probably will change this over. But as you can see, it works perfectly. So copy and paste wise, it's absolutely fine. Original code, well, because we're now using PyCharm, it's much easier just to handle it. You can just copy and paste it as you like quite easily. Now, there's another couple of things to, to be aware of. The task info dot YAML. And what you can see here is the visibility. So all of these ones that say false, the student won't be able to see them when it is previewed in student mode. So, you know, things like the extra images, we don't need the students to see those. So those will all be taken away. You can also do this by right clicking and making things visible and invisible to the students. But I actually find it easier just to edit the text file there. What you're seeing there is TextMate, just an app application. You don't need it. PyCharm's got everything you need for Markdown, but I do use TextMate for other purposes. So it's there and handy. Now, what you'll notice here is that that one's not working. And this is because this was a special function that Repli built into their own Markdown. It's not standard. However, I did mention we have the full power of uh, HTML and PyCharm is far more generous about what... Um, HTML tags it will allow in even markdown so you have two choices personally I might well be going down the HTML route more and more uh, when I'm making new stuff but for today I just want the bare minimum which basically in this case just means going to YouTube and just grabbing that embed code you can even start it at the right point and that will all be respected uh, get rid of that just pop that in and also Hey, it's HTML. Hmm, I don't like that size. That's a bit too much. Let's uh, get that size down. I'm only wanting that for a little thing. But sometimes you might want to say, well, maybe it needs to be full screen. You've got the full power of HTML. You can put a link below if you want to full screen or tabs or whatever it is you fancy or even pull out videos for some sites and things like that. You're no longer limited to YouTube either. You can use any video that you want. You can see me just fixing the size of that, making it a bit smaller, because all I want is the James Bond, hello, James Bond, um, I'm Bond, James Bond, and just a bit of fun there for the students to play with and, and do that. So you can see the video is nicely there for you and everything is ready to have a go at. This task's got its inputs and outputs nicely lined up. One bonus feature is that you actually have multiple choice uh, tasks available. So if you press the task button, you can click multiple choice. And what's really handy is that you can get straight onto that and have a little go and play with it. And you can see that it might not immediately grab you as to how it works. You actually have to go into the YAML file and a little bit counterintuitively, it says is multiple choice false. And what that means is you're going to get items to choose rather than tick boxes. So an important one to be aware of when you're choosing that. So I'm just setting up the task here, fairly simple and, and going through it as quickly as I can. Just going through that. Just be aware while you're doing that, the uh, thing is trying to recompile this every single time and it is slowing it down a bit and playing with it. So I would suggest at some point, probably a good idea to switch off that preview of the task itself for a little while if you're planning to do lots with the multiple choice. But once you've done that, you can see that it actually performs really well once you're in there and allows you to create a multiple choice quiz. That's a bit of a silver lining and great for those of you using Linux, Mac or Windows. For those of you using Chromebooks, stay tuned to the channel. We'll have a look at the various options and the possible compromises that will have to be made.